So thank you very much, um, Miriam Dalli and Roberta Metzola for agreeing to speak to Loving Malta today. I just want to start by getting a, a quick perspective from you about the local political scene. I'm sure you're, you're following it quite closely, even though you're, you're both in, based in Brussels. Um, Miriam, do you feel that the government is living up to the expectations and standards that it set for itself in the 2013 election campaign? Do you feel that issues like Panama Papers have dented the government's credibility in that sense? I think the government is performing really well on certain aspects, like when it comes uh, to the economy and also to certain initiatives that have a direct impact on families, like, for example, childcare centers. There are issues where I want the government and I would like the government to move much, much forward and in a more positive way, like, for example, certain issues that uh, impact directly on the environment. I think there is so much more we can do. And I think and believe that the government needs to do more when it comes to issues which impinge directly on transparency. But all in all, I think that the government is performing well. It is not a perfect government. There are certain things where it can perform so much better. Roberta, do you think Simon Buzetil is managing to leave an, enough of an impact? Does it worry you that even after something like Panama Papers, you know, Joseph Muscat's tr trust ratings are still, still so good compared to Simon Buzetil? Well, if you look at the latest statistics and where people's concerns lie most, it is perhaps not surprising to see that corruption features at the very top level or topmost level of people's concerns. What people want from their leaders are honest, transparent brokers. They want a different type of politics where institutionalized corruption um, uh, is finally eradicated in our country. And they see Simon Buzutil as offering a true alternative. I work with Simon every day and I see that he has those values that people want in terms of an alternative government and I would like to see and I have no doubt that he would make a very good Prime Minister. Well, in a few weeks Malta will have the presidency, will hold the presidency of the European Union, something that I think should be the crowning moment, something we worked so hard for when uh, Malta joined the European Union, something we worked towards, we will be, our country will be leading every single political decision for six months. I wish that so few weeks away I would not have to be in a position where everywhere I go I am not only asked about what Malta, the Maltese government's priorities are, for the presidency, which I agree with and which our party has already said we would like to extend a hand of full cooperation with the government for the presidency. I wish that that was the only question I would be answering and not why is Conrad Mitzi still a minister in Joseph Muscat's government? Why are we looking at a, at a country where unfortunately something like this is overshadowing something that would otherwise be such a crowning moment for our EU membership? And Miriam, are you not concerned about these events and what sort of impact they've left on the country's image? Um, do, do you think it's, it's much ado about nothing? I believe that politicians need to also walk the talk. I mean, I can be very partisan and speak also about the latest developments about Beppe Fenekadami, but I will not. Um, because I believe that we're a very small country. We're on the eve of a very historic moment. We're taking over the presidency of the EU Council. Um, and literally all hands on deck. So I believe that this is our historic moment where we can truly shine. I'm sure that we will, we will shine. So yes, I speak with other MEPs. They speak uh, to me about, for example, unemployment rates. They are amongst the lowest in the EU. Um, they speak to me about how the economy is really moving forward for a very small island like Malta. So I would expect us to work for these six months because this is not the moment for any political party. I believe that this is truly the moment for Malta and uh, we really need to make um, a very, very positive and good name for our country during these six months. So we have a Prime Minister and the Leader of, of the Opposition who were both MEPs before and, and many people look at, at you two and say, oh, you might be the, the future leaders of, of your parties. Miriam, do, do you feel you're... you're <laughs> the, do you feel you're, you're contributing enough to your party in, in Europe? Do you, do you sometimes get the feeling that you should be helping out more back home? I'm never happy. Um, uh, for me, and 
there's no way where I say, yes, this is enough, I've done enough. So yes, I always want to do um, more. I always want to contribute more. Um, I'm quite a newcomer when it comes to politics. I've been in the European Parliament for the past two years and a half. So, you know, I want to learn more. And for me, this is a challenge that I look forward to and we'll take it day by day. What about you, Roberta? Do you, does it get frustrating sometimes feeling that you're working for the European Parliament, you know, there's, there's sometimes not much impact it can have and then back home there's, there's, so much, there's so much going on. Do you feel frustrated at all by that? I disagree that it doesn't have impact. I mean, that would negate the whole reason why Miriam and I are here. Um, we get a lot of feedback as to what we are doing here and it is our responsibility to make sure that what we do here every week when we go back to Malta we transmit that message and make sure that no decision we take here will affect any Maltese or got it in person negatively. I'd like to think that we could be closer um, that we don't spend, that there is, this, there is no longer this myth that Europe is far away. As we saw from the Brexit vote, um, a list of misconceptions made, let's say, led to a, Euro to a European Union member leaving the European Union. I think the responsibility on us six Maltese MEPs is huge. I have always run for this, uh, for this election. I have never run for local or national uh, politics. I take my mandate very seriously and there's a lot of work left to do. One hot topic at the moment that's being discussed locally is emergency contraception. Um, as you know, it's being proposed for the morning after pill to only be accessible at the whim of doctors. Uh, Miriam, shouldn't this be part of Labour's progressive agenda? Doesn't it upset you that this is still being discussed today? To be honest with you, I can't understand the logic um, where you tell women that if they want the morning after pill, they need to have a prescription from a doctor. Um, I would have expected this committee to either say yes, you can have access to the morning after pill, or no. So for me, it is a bit uh, something which I can't really understand. I can't understand why, um, if you're saying women, yes, you can have the morning after pill, you're telling them go to a doctor for prescription. So that is a bit illogical um, to me. Um, but I do understand that certain issues need to be discussed in detail and the different people will arrive to their own opinions. But this um, underlying uh, decision that was taken, this de decision was taken, uh, for me it's still a bit illogical. I can't understand so, the logic, the logic so, behind it. So what do you expect from your Labour government, from your, you know, your Prime Minister to, to take the bull by, by its horns in, on this matter or, or not? I would, accept, I would expect the government to act based on the scientific studies that will be presented and to formulate an opinion as such. Roberta, shouldn't the PN be showing that it's learned its lessons from the divorce and the gay rights debates? Why, why are we still erring on the side of caution on this matter? I think we have finally established that what we're talking about is contraception, which I would strongly believe has to be as widely accessible as possible. I think what none of us want is to set up this new category of morality police where politicians are trying to dictate um, to women what they can and what they cannot do. One, one of the things that, uh, and maybe you can both answer this, sort of, uh, what questions would it would be legitimate for a doctor to ask a woman before accepting whether to give her prescription or not? Can you think Maybe of it? You should ask the committee members <laughs> where I've to that conclusion. That's why I told you. For me, it's illogical. Are there any questions that you think would be legitimate for a doctor to ask a woman before asking? The questions are going to be very personal and intimate. Uh, so much so that, you know, I mean, um, a woman, I being a woman myself, I would feel probably uncomfortable having to go to a doctor um, for him or her to prescribe me um, the morning after pill. If we're agreeing it is a contraception and if we're agreeing that it can be given to, to women, I still can't understand the logic, as I said before, why it should be given on a doctor's prescription. Roberta, any questions that you think might be legitimate? <laughs> No, I cannot, I cannot picture myself in, in a doctor's clinic asking for or responding to certain questions from a doctor.